So, so far in discussion of nucleic acids, we have uh, went into the discovery of DNA being the, first off, the molecule of interest when we talk about inheritance, but secondly, uh, the race to find its structure. And we found that it was the work of Watson and Crick using um, bits and pieces of information from other scientists, especially that of the uh, X-ray uh, crystal diffraction done by Rosalind Franklin. Uh, we know that their research has led to the structure of DNA being a double helix. And in the uh, 1962, they received a Nobel Prize for their uh, <clears throat> findings. And what they basically said was that DNA was indeed a double helix. It held the information uh, inside that, so that it would be the sequence of nucleotides, which would carry the information of genes. Uh, it also sh uh, illustrated the rules, so that their molecule followed the rules for complementary base pairing. And it also showed how DNA could be replicated. And our focus in this, this lecture will be DNA replication and then looking into a gene and looking at how genes can be transcribed into proteins. So that would be a process known as protein synthesis. So DNA can be duplicated. And if you go back, this would happen during the S phase of interphase of a cell cycle where the DNA must first replicate itself in order to ensure that each new cell gets a copy of the DNA. So DNA replication is a process that builds a new molecule that is semi-conservative. So each new uh, DNA molecule, daughter molecule, would have a old strand from the parental DNA and a newly replicated strand. And that's what they mean by semi-conservative. So DNA, is, DNA replication is the process of copying a DNA molecule. And basically replication requires the following steps. First, the DNA molecule, the old parental DNA molecule, molecule to be replicated must be uh, unwound. And unwinding occurs uh, using an enzyme called DNA helicase. So DNA helicase will unwind the DNA molecule, therefore exposing the nucleotides on the inside. Now, what holds the two strands of D the DNA molecule together are hydrogen bonds. So between cytosine and guanine, you have three hydrogen bonds. Between an adenine and a thymine that are complementing each other are uh, two hydrogen bonds. And if you go back to our study in basic chemistry, we know that hydrogen bonds are fairly weak bonds. So this enzyme called DNA helicase can come in. It will attach itself to the molecule where replication is to begin, and it will start to replicate, uh, open up the DNA molecule to allow replication to occur. Once the DNA molecule is open, you, you are going to have another enzyme come in called DNA polymerase. And DNA polymerase is going to read each of the molecules, each of the nucleotides on the parental DNA strand and add new nucleotides following the rules of base pairing. Then you finally have the joining of complementary nucleotides to join and form the new strands. Each daughter DNA molecule contains a template strand or an old strand and a new strand, hence giving you that semi-conservative uh, semi -conservative structure. Uh, steps two and three are carried out by the, the enzyme DNA polymerase. Now, replication itself, the DNA molecule, if you look at the double helix, the DNA molecule runs five prime to three prime in one end, and it runs three prime to five prime in the other end. So it's an anti-parallel in structure. So the one molecule, if you look at the one strand of the molecule, it runs right side up. The other strand, it's upside down. Now that's key, because when you talk about DNA replication, when DNA helicase comes in and opens up the, the DNA molecule, exposes those nucleotides, you have a strand that can be synthesized, the newly strand, could be synthesized on a continuous basis, and the other strand is, is uh, synthesized in fragments. Uh, DNA replication always occurs in the five prime to three prime direction. So DNA helicase will come in, and if you see here, it will come in and it will start to unwind the DNA molecule, and what happens is you, you create an area called the replication fork, where you get this little replication bubble, so the replication fork is where those two strands are kind of like coming apart there. 
So the one strand, called the leading strand, will be replicated on a continuous basis. The other strand can re be re replicated in fragments called Okazaki fragments. And you can see those right here. So the one strand, the leading strand, can be replicated on a continuous basis because DNA polymerase is following right behind DNA helicase. And as long as DNA helicase keeps exposing nucleotides, DNA polymerase could read those nucleotides of the parental strand and add new complementary base pairs to build the newly synthesized strand. And that could happen continuously. On the other strand of DNA, this would be called the lagging strand. Uh, replication is also occurring in the 5' to 3' prime direction, but it can only be done in fragments because DNA helicase needs to open up to expose those nucleotides, and then DNA polymerase needs to come in and read the newly exposed uh, nucleotides, and then eventually it would hit a point where it already synthesized the strand. So then it needs to wait until the helicase opens up the DNA molecule some more, and then polymerase will bind again and read the new strands. So those Okazaki fragments are then fused together by a third enzyme, and you can see its name right here, called DNA ligase. So at the end, you'll have two newly uh, daughter DNA molecules that are semi-conservative, one containing the old strand and one containing the newly synthesized strand. And that would be DNA replication. Uh, we'll go over this. I'll give out a worksheet. We'll discuss it some more in class and uh, have an opportunity for questions. The other central dogma of biology would be protein synthesis. And we know that proteins are built from monomers called amino acids. So the mechanism of protein synthesis is going to be discussed now. So how do you go from looking at a gene, which is a functional unit of DNA that will code for something, and if you think of all the enzymes and all the different proteins in the body, they are coded for by the DNA. So the DNA holds the instructions to build proteins, and we know that uh, proteins are made in the organelles called the ribosomes. Uh, ribosomes can be free-floating in the cell, or they can be attached to the endoplasmic reticulum, which if, they, if attached, then that would be the rough ER. So proteins are made at ribosomes. So genes specify the makeup of proteins. Genes are linked to proteins. Um, here you could see uh, the chemical basis of sickle cell disease in humans. Here you have that normal erythrocyte right here. Here you have one that would be of a sickle cell type. And basically, if you look at the structure, the protein hemoglobin, which carries the oxygen molecule in cells, here you have amino acids called threonine, proline, glutamate, and, and glutamate. Just changing one of those amino acids, when you change glutamate to valine, you get a, a sickle cell instead of a normal erythrocyte. So that changes the, the biochemistry there of that cell, of that protein, and therefore affecting the structure of that cell. So a gene is a segment of DNA that specifies the amino acid sequence of a protein. The first step of protein synthesis is a process called transcription. During transcription, the DNA is going to serve as a template for RNA formation. So DNA is going to be transcribed monomer by monomer into RNA. That RNA molecule is going to be called messenger RNA, or abbreviated mRNA. Then that messenger RNA will be uh, sliced and capped, so it'll kind of be altered before it leaves the nucleus, and it will leave the nucleus and then enter out into the cytoplasm where it will bind to a ribosome, or what we would call a ribosomal subunit called rRNA, and the messenger RNA will feed into the rRNA, and then the amino acids are brought in on another molecule called tRNA. That step there is called translation. So when the messenger RNA is going to be transcribed in the nucleus, translation is going to occur at the ribosome in a cytoplasm. And during translation, an RNA transcript will direct the sequence of amino acids in a polypeptide chain. So in order to do that, if you look at the overview of gene expression, you have the DNA, uh, transcription occurs in a nucleus, the transcribing will follow the rules of complementary base pairing, where you're, you're going to read a DNA strand and the messenger RNA will be followed as uh, follow the rules of Chargas rules for base pairing. Except remember, now you're looking at RNA, so instead of having thymine, you're going to have uracil. So G will bond with C, but A will bond with U instead of thymine. The messenger RNA will then be read in triplet code, and that will be in, in the step of translation. 
were out in the nucleus, it will be read in a triplet code called a code codon, and that triplet code or triplet three nucleotides are read CGG. That will code for an amino acid. This amino acid, particular, being called arginine. The genetic code you have heard of that before. The genetic code is a sequence of nucleotides in DNA that specifies the order of amino acids in a polypeptide chain. A codon is three base sequence corresponding to a specific amino acid. So, important properties of the genetic code. First, the genetic code is degenerate. Second, the genetic code is unambiguous. And third, the code has a start and stop signals. And if you look at the, the genetic code here, here you have all the codons to be read, and these are the 20 different amino acids that can be coded for based on all those codons. You have three stop codons, coded for UAA, that's stop, UAG, that's stop, and UGA, that's a stop codon. Your start codon to start the entire process will be AUG, which will code for an amino acid called methionine. During transcription, a gene passes its coded information into messenger RNA. We'll go over this in a lot more detail um, in our next lecture as we cover more of protein synthesis. And we'll get into how mutations can affect the uh, protein structure.